This instructional video is designed to show you how to solve an equilibrium problem involving a polyprotic acid. In this case, we're using phosphoric acid, which has three hydrogens to dissociate. So we assume stepwise dissociation, meaning that we will need to solve for the equilibrium problem for the first dissociation, which will give us the first concentration we're looking for. Uh, the information from here, we're going to the second dissociation. And so, we'll carry on like this to get each of the individual steps until we have the completely bare phosphate ion. And once we have all of that, we can get the concentration of hydrogen. So, in our very first step, we complete the ice table. Much of this is already written out. But we have our initial concentration of 0.1 molar. We have no hydrogen and no H2PO4 minus. All of these are one to one. So, the change line has already been filled out. That we will always uh, lose stoichiometrically one mole of reactant. And for both products, generate one mole. So the only thing left then is to add up these two lines. We get 0.1 minus x, x, and x. So now it's possible to write out the equilibrium constant expression, substituting in our various quantities for our first dissociation. So we have 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3 is equal to the hydrogen concentration times the H2PO4 that's squared divided by 0.1 minus x. If we use the approximation method, we get that 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3 will be approximated by x squared over 0.1, which is 10 to the minus 1. Uh, we can show very simply this is 7.1 times 10 to the minus 4 equals x squared. And the value we get for x by approximation comes out to be <clears throat> 2.66 times 10 to the negative 2. Now, we compare this against the original amount. And what we'll find is that this is greater than 5%. So our approximation fails, and we cannot use that value. So we can expand this expression out to give us the full quadratic, and we get 7.1 times 10 to the minus 4 minus 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3x minus x squared equals 0. Because this is our quadratic, we have the following values. A equals negative 1, B equals negative 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3, and C equals 7.1 times 10 to the minus 4. We plug these values into the quadratic formula. We find a value for x, 2.33 times 10 to the minus 2. And so this then is our value for x we can subtract that from 0.1 and this leaves us with 7.67 times 10 to the minus 2. So we have the concentration of undissociated acid and now we have a value for x. So we're going to take that and substitute in here. So this is 0.0233, 0.02 3, 3. So now we can fill in the equilibrium line by adding these two together. So we have 0 0.0233 minus x, 0 0.0233 plus x, and then just plus x. So in the interest of space, I can now erase this here, as we'll need this area to solve our second dissociation. So we're going to substitute in, this time using our second 
constant, 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8 equals 0 0.0233 plus x times x up top, and 0 0.0233 minus x on the bottom. So now we just need to multiply through everything to get a quadratic. And we have 1.47 times 10 to the minus 9 uh, minus 6.3 times 10 to the negative 8 times x. This will equal. I'm going to rewrite this as a number in scientific notation. plus x squared. Now, we compare the coefficients on the linear term. We have 2.33 times 10 to the negative 2 versus negative 6.3 times 10 to the negative 8. Uh, this number is exceedingly small compared to this one, so our entire linear term will come from here. So we can rewrite this as a quadratic x squared plus 2.33 times 10 to the negative 2 x minus 1.47 times 10 to the negative 9. This means that a equals 1, b equals 2.33 times 10 to the negative 2, and c equals negative 1.47 times 10 to the minus 9. So if we plug these values into the quadratic formula, we get a value for x, 6.39 times 10 to the negative 8. So this gives us the ability to determine a value here for our um, H2PO4 minus. We note again that this number is very, very small relative to this one. And so it's straightforward then to write in that this is 2.33 times 10 to the negative 2. So now we want to take uh, this value for x and use these results to plug in here. And for that I'll use the green. So this value goes here, 6.39 times 10 to the negative 8. And again we know that's very small relative to this value, so for our hydrogen, 0.0233. This allows us to write in the final line at equilibrium, 6.39 times 10 to the negative 8 minus x, 0 0.0233 plus x, and just x. So now that we have all of that information copied over, I'll again erase all of this here so that we have board space. So we're going to write in everything for our equilibrium constant using the third value because this is the third dissociation. And we need 0 0.0233 plus x and x and 6.39 times 10 to the negative 8 minus x. So now we do the same thing as before. <clears throat> we'll get 2.68 times 10 to the negative 20 minus 4.2 times 10 to the minus 13x. And here 2.33 times 10 to the minus 2x plus x squared. Our linear term will be entirely due to this one because 10 to the minus 13 is extremely small in comparison. So writing on a proper quadratic, x squared plus 2.33 times 10 to the negative 2x minus 2.68 times 10 to the minus 20. This gives us a equals 1, b equals 2.33 times 10 to the minus 2, and c equals negative 2.68 times 10 to the minus 20. So plugging these values into the quadratic formula will give us a value of x that is 1.77 times 10 to the negative 18. 
So now that we have this value, uh, we see that corresponds to the bare phosphate ion concentration, 1.77 times 10 to the minus 18. Uh, we know how much to subtract from this quantity. We know that 10 to the minus 8 and 10 to the minus 18 are so far apart in terms of magnitude that we can conclude 6.39 times 10 to the negative 8 is our concentration here. And finally, we know how much hydrogen we're going to have. 2.33 times 10 to the negative 2. And so these results are very much consistent with what we observe experimentally, that the majority of hydrogen ion concentration in the dissociation of phosphoric acid comes from that first dissociation. And we get increasingly negligible amounts of additional hydrogen as we see increasingly negligible amounts of further dissociated acid.